musicians want to know the answers to burning questions. Top trombone players, even me, are here with Paul the Trombonist Nowell to answer your burning questions. Uh, amazing job, really amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. Uh, it's a fun one. That was incredible. But uh, anyway, accurate man. Wow, thank you. you didn't make one blip. Well, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> ah, what I really notice time. is that you really pay attention to the articulations. Mm. That's like everything that's written, you 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 pay yeah. attention to all of the articulations, which some people kind of skim over articulations. Oh, sure. You know, it's like the la an afterthought. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's um, what I really noticed about what you're doing is you really those articulations are there. You know. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, it's. It's so much, uh, it's, it's really important, I mean, especially uh, when you're in a, in a, in a situation where um, you're recording or even, even in certain live works, it really is a determiner of, of like how um, good an ensemble is. If they, if they fluff off the articulation or if they're right on it. I mean, you can tell a difference when, when uh, the attention to detail is there, but a composer or an arranger is going to want their music played as it is on the page. They put those articulations, those longs, those shorts, for a reason. That's it's what they wanted, and you know sometimes uh, there could be, say, a mistake um, in the part. Maybe they they wrote something long or short that they intended otherwise, mm -hmm. and it gets copied. Uh, by the the copyists and it, it, that's and, and all of a sudden they have to go back and because it's it might feel maybe irregular or or just uh, unusual and at that point they'll want to check to make sure that yeah that's what was intended but by and large um, yeah that I mean you want to you want to pay as close attention to those things as possible uh, dynamic wise. Um, it's a really, it, that's also a really big important thing. I mean, uh, one of the great things that I, I learned um, when it comes to loudness, and I mean, this thing is capable, the bass trombone is capable of like, it's, it's, it produces from what I remember in my acoustics class, hopefully it's still accurate, the, um, that it's the loudest wind instrument in the orchestra. You could bury the orchestra besides the percussion with, with just you know, sheer volume and sound. Wow. I mean, if, as far as physical power uh, and acoustic... You More know, than tubas? Yeah, yeah, because of the, uh, I think, the cylindrical nature of the instrument and how it... It, it cuts it, through it, a little it, more. Yeah, it can mm -hmm. project. Now, of course, when you're talking trumpet, we're talking frequency and up high, of course, that's going to cut through. But as far as actual physical power 
this is, can produce a good deal more. It's a beautiful um, instrument. I love the bass thanks. trombone. Yeah, it's such it, a pleasant sound. It's, um, I mean, it's capable of so many when did it, different... When was it invented? Uh, well, I mean, the uh, it's been around for hundreds of years. Like back in the Renaissance um, is when it got going. Uh, it was, the original slide trombone was kind of an offshoot. It was, it was an improvement made on the original slide trumpet. Uh, which only used one tube to slide back and forth on, mm -hmm. and um, but the, the 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 danger of that is if you came back too quickly, some guys would knock their teeth out. Really? Yeah. Um, but the the double slide uh, came into 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 consideration, and it it kind of lessened that danger a little bit more. But um, then they started going into uh, families of of, of, of a family of the trombones. So you had something the size of, of, of a soprano trombone, something that is the same mm -hmm. octave as a trumpet. But then you started to get tenor and bass. They took it and down an octave and stuff. Exactly. Um, my contrabass trombone is a Canstall uh, F. It's it's based in F. So um, you're starting off in sixth position. Is that how? It well, it, you, you start you start like as if you were to put your your uh, your F attachment down. Um, and all of a sudden, and that's first position. That's first position. So six becomes one. In in a sense, yeah. I mean, but the on on that slide, they I've, I've heard that there there are six positions on it. I if I had a handle, maybe I could get all the way out there. But thankfully, there are two valves on that instrument as well. Jeez. And I I can reach five. I can reach five of those instruments, but I can still chromatically get to everything that I need to on it. How do um, you not pass out playing those notes? Good man. question. <laughs> Lots of sneaking, <laughs> sneaky breathing and, and that sort of thing. But um, a, a good thing that I found out uh, as far as volume goes, getting back to that, was the um, never, if, 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 you, if you can't hear the lead player, you're playing too loud. Mm. So just always be listening for that lead voice. And if for some reason it, you're, you're obscuring that, back off a little bit because mm -hmm. it might not be balancing. And, you wanna you wanna be a team player. That's so important for you know continuing your 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 uh, time as as a as, as you know just working in. in if you want to get called. Yeah, exactly. You have to be able to. You need to listen to every musical situation that's going on around you while you're playing because um, you need to find where you fit into that. Is it something where you're a part of a texture, and you you need to fit into that and like if there's a tuba next to you I, I, I really enjoy those moments because you can you can kind of fit into that all-encompassing whoa sound that's mm. going on <laughs> But then there are times when you know you need to be things are a bit more grand and but you're still wanting to hear like a, a, a still a, a matching volume from everybody. And then there are times when you're peeling paint. Um, <laughs> it doesn't happen quite as often, but it seems uh, in, in movie scores and like certain maybe Respighi things, it's a very popular thing. Um, it, uh, that, at least that cranking to that, to that level. Um, it, it could be a situation on the TV where there's a, it's a it's a big chase scene or something, and it, they're nearly getting up to them, and the the trombones are roaring away, even chimbasso. I mean, yeah. that's there are times when you have to be really really giving it to them, and. But knowing those moments and knowing you just you're paying attention to what the dynamics are on the page, and uh, and if it's not right, the composer or the arranger or the conductor, whoever's kind of leading things along, will let you know, um, and then you'll you'll change it up and it'll make it you'll make it work. Wonderful, Craig. That's Thanks. just fascinating. Thank you so much. Thank you for man. having me, man.